After Volodymyr Zelensky delivered a rousing speech to U.S. lawmakers this week, Tucker Carlson unleashed a diatribe that put schoolyard sadists everywhere to shame. No one's ever addressed the United States Congress in a sweatshirt before, he seethed, slamming Zelensky as a strip club manager whose presence was humiliating to the greatest country on earth. Carlson's attack on the Ukrainian president, whose olive green garb was meant to dramatize his country's wartime plight, has sparked outrage because of its demeaning quality at a time of extraordinary duress for the Ukrainian people. But this episode deserves a deeper look than Carlson's adolescent belittling usually merits. Carlson's rent carried a more hateful edge than usual, a kind of shrill fury. Perhaps that's because Zelensky's presence before Congress was far more humiliating to Carlson and his ideological comrades than to anyone else. It demonstrated how badly they misjudged Ukraine's will to resist Russian conquest and the durability of the U.S. commitment to our beleaguered ally. This represents the failure of a worldview, a strain of far-right authoritarian populism that goes well beyond Ukraine. A whole lot of things have happened that, in Carlson's mental universe, were not supposed to happen. In his diatribe, Carlson depicted Zelensky as little more than a sleazy street thug who had come to demand money from Congress, telling his audience that the lawmakers love him much more than they love you. He exaggerated Ukraine's conditions for ending the war, depicting Ukraine as the unreasonable party. Carlson has long insisted that Ukrainians are pawns in the United States' quest for regime change in Russia, predicting our warmongering would trigger nuclear catastrophe. He has trivialized the invasion as a faraway border dispute and has scoffed that Democrats are hypnotizing Americans into feeling hate for Russia. Carlson's obvious bet has been that voters wouldn't care about the conflict and would see little virtue in U.S. military aid to Ukraine. Lawmakers would ultimately abandon the cause. But Zelensky's appearance itself forcefully repudiated all of this. It demonstrated that Ukrainian resistance is driven by its people's own extraordinarily courageous commitment to self-rule. It showed that U.S. support for Ukraine is unwavering. It displayed the success of President Biden's careful balance, which has enabled Ukraine to regain substantial ground while avoiding direct U.S. escalation, refuting Carlson's predictions otherwise. There is an ideology behind all that wrongness, and Carlson has clearly laid it out. It tells Americans that Democratic elites prioritize Ukraine's border over our own. They love Zelensky more than they love you. This conflation of the two borders, a widespread right-wing populist trope, encourages Americans to turn inward in multiple ways, washing our hands of responsibility for international allies and desperate migrants alike. This worldview also reels against elite wokeness. Carlson frequently tells viewers that the same elites who want people to hate Russia and are obliterating the southern border are also brainwashing kids with anti-white racism. As Kathy Young writes at The Bulwark, right-wing populist distaste for Zelensky is driven partly by Ukraine's desire for integration with the liberal, secular, internationalism-minded West. That through-line links attacks on elite wokeness per Ukraine sentiment and receptiveness to migration. As a political argument, all this has proved pretty impotent. Just before the midterm elections, Carlson wrongly predicted a humiliating repudiation for Democrats. Importantly, Carlson based this in part on Democrats' wokeness and border policies, hubristically certain that voters would reject both. <laughs> 